Big Shook, Big Shook. It's really real right now. Mr. DL. Two, two, two. Two, two, two. Who's off? Welcome to the Danger Zone podcast, everyone. Oh, yeah. We are back. Starting it off. Episode 71. Uh-huh. <laughs> What's good, man? This is uh, no, Big man. Shug. Mr. DL. And Chef Tan and Nicole. Oh, yeah. yeah. Interesting yeah, week. Man. Interesting Episode week in hip hop. Go ahead, you know. No, nah, just Danger a Zone interesting, podcast. Interesting week. Be <laughs> <laughs> Keep talking over each other. <laughs> I just keep saying words. Go ahead. What you want to say, man? No, we'll have a. We won't have a full interview today, but we will have a guest call in for a quick moment. Um, but yeah. Yay, Shimmy! <laughs> we had a. Well, who's call, uh, who's term, 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 terminology is going to call, call in. Talk about his new oh, album. Wait. It's not easy money. Go ahead. No, man. no. Terminology is calling in. Um, I want to start hey. with. Oh, go ahead. Do you see a line right here? Yeah, uh, yeah it looks like a sun. It looks like light, light, a light beam. Yeah, but beam me up, Scotty. It'll probably, something. it'll probably move when the it's sun. Jesus, when the sun moves, maybe it's all good. It's, it's uh, yeah, um, you're being you're being blessed. The light is shining down upon you, Big Shug. Yeah, <laughs> oh, God said nope. That was a mistake. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Yeah, that looks good right yeah. there. Now too. Okay. All right, good. Yeah, man. I know we're on. I'm like, I'm like talking like I'm chilling and shit. Yo, <laughs> so what's good, man? Nah, Something man. One. Uh, you know, I uh, we've talked about him a lot on the podcast. DMC from the legendary Run DMC says that he's coming out with a new album, and it will feature heavyweights in rap and rock and roll. So um, looking forward to that. Uh, Hey. I want to know what it's gonna like. What is it gonna when be? It comes, I know it's gonna ruin it for you. Yeah. Yo, when it comes <laughs> to the album, there is none higher. You know what I'm saying? Sucker MCs must call him sire. You know he said he won't stop rapping until he retire. You know what I'm saying? Come or on, his DMC. voice gets tired. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> it, was, oh, it was messed up for a minute, but yeah, yeah. he came. He came back. So, you know, it's crazy when these dudes come out with like these new albums because so when you think of DMC, you don't see, think of him uh, so, uh, making the transition to be, you know, rap. Unless, you know, sometimes even the way they rap, rock, like even like this kind of like nice, Greg Nice too, where it was that cadence yeah. thing like that, you know, yeah. I'm the da 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 da. Yeah. So, that can go probably with some rock sound and shit or whatever, you know? Yeah. Or, or you have to have the right beats, but then that's what you already know what, what you, you think you're going to listen to. Like, for instance, LL Cool J, they just had that single called, uh, I guess, from the album The Force or the song's called The I Force, just heard right? It yeah. The day. Now, it's, it's produced by uh, Q Tip. But yeah, like to me, like lyrically, like, you know, speaking of LL, like, and everything. That part is cool. Like that part, I think, I think he's hitting it, man. But the beat seems like it's all over the place. Seems yeah, like they don't go to. That's what I'm to worried me. about. Like no diss to Q-Tip as a producer, he's dope. But I mean, we're waiting after 30 years, waiting for LL Cool J, and then he's gonna fucking do a Q-Tip album. I'm just like, this isn't. Well, you're, you're you're only servicing your older fans. You're not really trying to to be a new artist or a, a, a current artist with a move like that. I feel. I mean, I mean, to me. To me, I mean, I didn't hear the rest of the stuff, but that that beat, you know, sonically and in the direction was, yeah, it was most different. Yeah. It just was like, what was it like? You know, that's how, like, you, it's like, do I bop to this? No, I can't. You know what I'm saying? Do I listen to this message? Oh, I can. But it's like, this beat like- You're, you're LL you know, Cool J, you don't, you don't need to recreate the wheel. You just need to rap good. Nah, he can, he, he, awesome. he can do, like, I want to hear some more shit because that beat was like, it was almost like when I heard um uh, Dave East on this premiere track, it didn't connect, you know what I'm saying? Sometimes shit don't be connected, man. And um, we don't have to be the be all and end all, but I guarantee, like, you know, uh, uh, even the last 20 years, all of us have heard, like, the same thing. Yeah. What I mean, like, you know, sonically, musically, whatever, We've all heard the same thing. It would be like, yo, because I think LL, the way he was sounding, like vocally, 
and and, and, and spitting, it was dope. It's just it didn't go like that. It does that music is kind of somewhere else. Which, which you know, abstract wise, they're probably trying to do that. Yeah, yeah. You know like, I mean? that's how, you don't know, don't do that. Don't do that, LL Cool J. Just rap. Part, right? You're super dope yeah. at rap. You were you yeah. were super dope at rapping. I'm not saying he isn't anymore. I haven't heard it, but I'm just saying mm-hmm. you don't need to recreate the wheel, bro. And then yeah, speaking of speaking of Primo and Dave East, um, I wanted to talk about this a few weeks back, but I, I completely forgot twice. Primo and Sauce Walker. Interesting, mm-hmm. interesting fucking collaboration there. Um, I haven't heard it, know, but I, it, 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 I'm intrigued. I, I kind of am intrigued by that. Yeah. I mean, the whole movement with Prem anyway is, uh, you know, shout out to my man is Ian Schwartz management. But yeah, he he has a um, he has a vision too that's mad dope, like some different ideas, and different things that he does. So I know them collectively come up with this with these things because yeah. there's some different stuff too coming down the, the road which i could see it, it, I, you know i fuck with it just the concept of what's about to happen you know what i mean with, with them you know with command musically and artists but um do you like sauce walker i mean you know i can't say that to be honest with you i can't say um he's like a, a pimp underground ish borderline mainstream pimp hop rapper from houston and but listen you know. what i'm saying so I can't, not to cut you, but I can't say I like them and don't. Yeah. Because I really have to listen to them. Yeah, you know I mean? Yeah. But, um, you know, some people call sauce, right? Some people call sauce like a drink. They like, yo, yo, yeah, he, yeah. he's he, he yeah. sauce or whatever, saucy, right? I'm saucy. Right? <laughs> now, and my, and my name is Phil, you know what I'm saying? So, therefore, what I'm trying to say is, yo, you like sauce, Walker? <laughs> I like all the sauce. Yo, you little drunk? So you little drunk? Then? Nah. But I mean, like I said, I'm not, I haven't listened to him, so I'm, I'm not going to say I'll send you something you might like. You know what I mean? um, and and, and I, I will listen, though, you know. That, I, hey, that was dope you, for you to say that, right? <clears throat> I'll, send you, I'll send you something you might like. But that's cool, like, because it was like, yo, a person saying that to you is well, different than the people. This is what I'm saying. That's different than the people sending beats talking about, I made some joints that I think you might like. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. Pull, you know what I mean? It's almost like this is different because you like so maybe you might like this so, but you're not sending me a beat. Yeah, yeah. You see, to me that beat should be getting me. That or when people say, "Yo, um, you know, I like I love Primo." Like I was trying to get that feel with this beat. Already, I yeah, know. Just yeah. guys, make your own right. beats, man. Uh, attention, producers! Uh, it's cool to be inspired by fucking DJ Premier and Dr. Dre, but let them be DJ Premier and Dr. Dre. You be you. Know what I mean? you. Like I, I, I'll. <laughs> Like I listen to some beats, and they say, "Yo, I like because I gave it that more uh, raw hip hop shit." You know what I mean? Feel. Yeah. And here's the thing: <clears throat> people think because we still here rocking and doing different things, you know, it's still this music. Um, they think that you're mad, like older artists or whatever, are mad at what's happening right now, because and, and when you're like, like I don't know, maybe you might want to call it uh, a bully rap or some rugged shit. Yeah. I was. Perceived in hip hop and you're spitting how my records have been perceived and even with Freddie or whatever too. Um, but <laughs> at the end, at the end of the day, it's basically it's basically like um, oh, I'm trying to put it together here. Um, well, we would that that music was what we did like at that point, but that's that's not what we were. And people try to keep you connected with that music like that. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. yeah. They say. This, so they give me beats and they be like, yo, I want you to sound like, you know, it was this, I figured you would like be great right here. And I hear some of them shits and it's like, sound like motherfuckers, man, with a, somebody got an 808 and a bunch of lunch boxes, the metal ones. Yeah. You know what I mean? And they're banging the shit out of them. So you don't never find, like, you, you don't never find shit, man. There's some people, who, there's some people who want to copy and there's some people who want to be so original that they just make stuff that's unlistenable. <laughs> Too original. I, I, like 50 Cent once said, um, that genius jizzle rhymes so smart he sounds stupid. Yeah. You know <laughs> to me, though, I never forgot that line because I kind of knew what he meant. He wasn't saying that, um, he, he wasn't saying that the jizzle is stupid. He's obviously spitting some stuff if you listen to him. That's crazy deep, but it's like he's blowing. But he's saying that because we don't comprehend it or a person don't comprehend something, you know what I'm saying? That that you're stupid, like you feel stupid. You know what I mean? So you so he sounds stupid like the Charlie Brown parents. 
You know what I mean? I don't want, 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 want. Like when this public is around me, he sound like, you know, I don't know what the fuck he's saying. You see what I'm saying? So that was 50 Sting, but it still was hilarious. Though. Jay-Z said it about Nas on that disc record. He says, just because you wear a kufi, it don't mean that he bright. Just because you don't understand him, it don't mean that he nice. It just means you don't understand and the bullshit that he writes. Is it Uchi Wally Wally or is it one mic? Is that girl lost or the shorty owe you for ice? <laughs> that was uh, kind of the same thing that you're saying. Here. <laughs> wait, okay. Wait, wait. Way to spit the verses. Go, white boy, <laughs> go, white boy, go. All I got, all I got to say is what not what Jay Z said. I mean, Nas said. Couple spots. First one, fuck Jay Z. <laughs> that, that's that, that, that's okay. that, that. Yo, that said it all. You know, and I'm saying that as the record. Jay Z, my man. Like I, yeah. I got my love for him and whatever. You know, but I'm just saying when that came on, fuck Jay Z. Whatever you were saying, and then he said, you know, whiskers like you a whisker. No whiskers like a rat. Like, so he making you see these little rodents with them little whiskers and shit. Like, you're visualizing this stupid shit. I'm like, yo, this dudes are snapping. Because that's my thing. When they was battle records, you know, not really delving into that deeply. But when they battle record or people are dissing each other, I wanted to see a motherfucker get, like, crafty, too. You yeah. know what I mean? Just be, that's and, a- and snapping. Just snapping. Like, that's why that shit was like, when you watch that uh, NWA, um, you watched that NWA uh, movie, yeah, and that, that uh, dude was like, "Damn, he got us!" Yeah, like, when he's it, so mad. Yellow. And the other dude, was, the other dude was mad. He's like, "Yo, I think the other dude was like, yo, I think shit was kind of funny." You know, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, so that's the dude. Like, if I'm roasting you with DL right now, that y'all can find the humor, and be laughing, not being like, "Yo, yeah, yeah, yeah. That, yo, we gonna kill him." Yo, go get it. Hey, yo, uh, he gonna say, "Yo, Tanya." Go get that motherfucking stew mug. You know what I mean? And put that guy, put, put some kill, the stew mug. Put some rat poison in that shit and give it the show. Now, you what think, I'm saying, like, you think those, those, the ability to snap on, 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 uh, command is why no one really came at Redman? Um, because I, the Redman is that's one guy who never really had public beef where someone I said mean, his name distant pub- publicly. I mean, but you know what? You can go to a lot of rappers like that. You know no, I'm I mean? just saying him specifically because he's known as being funny and a, and a jokester. Like, I was just kidding. I mean, I mean, I guess that it could be that because I feel like even at this day and age or whatever, I'm, I'm, I still can get that too. You know what I mean? So I still, even like, if, if you say something will put me in that position, I'm, I'm going to give it to you. You know what I mean? So you know, I guess that never leaves you. But like, I know a comedian or two that I could be standing in the front row with suspenders and some fucking shorts on, right? <laughs> and a pair of platforms and striped socks, and they won't say a damn thing yeah. about me. We were watching a, a, we were watching a girl, a girl comedian, and she was uh on on Instagram or whatever, selling selling tickets to her concert. And she was showing the seats. <clears throat> and she was like, look, look at these seats are available. Look at these seats. They're in the non-roasting area. You will not be roasted if you sit in these seats. <laughs> <laughs> It wasn't just hilarious, was it? No, no. Well, like, I forget her name was said, Chrissy something. Yeah. Yo, yo, because that's what it is. Some people, man, listen. I've been at two uh, comedy shows with dudes from, from the fan. I mean, dude, it was just watching the show came up and knocked money out. You know what I mean? I'm talking about this dude said, "Yeah, and I know that's why you're here." One, I'll never forget this was years ago. I know why you're here because that that your wife, that fat bitch, didn't want to come. That dude oh, still up in. Dude stood up in his chair, and, it, and it, this is kind of like a hood. Sounds thing, like, like it. Club, and, dude, <laughs> and I know Sounds dude, like and I'm like, uh, so I'm like, and we, we, what kind of the bouncers there, me and my man, but but this dude is my <laughs> man too, right? So, and, and then the dude says something else. He said, yo, don't be talking about my wife. Mm-hmm. Like on some Will Smith shit, but he was yelling it from- <laughs> Keep from my crowd. wife's weight out of your fucking so, mouth. So, <laughs> so, then he, yo, so then he said it again. And I was turned the other way talking to somebody, and all oh, you heard was shit. Oh, shit. right out. Like, oh shit! When we with the bouncers, and we turn around, money's laid out on the ground, mm. and my man's leaving, and so we, you know, I usher him out. But I'm kind of laughing too because this is my man, right? But but you can't go to no comedy show or even whatever, and and if you can't take that shit, I don't care if you try to impress a girl, or whoever. Yeah. You can't. You can't. You heard OC say a week ago. That I would be roasting some people and they be trying to hold their eyes open the, wide so they will cry. The right? problem, the you problem know? with it, with I, I see it a lot. It, people that get roasted is this: it's 
they don't necessarily mind the actual roast. What they mind mm -hmm. is the room laughing at them. The laughter. Let yeah. me tell you something. When the people I'm co sign it, yeah. that's what, where the problem well, starts. Listen, first of all, I've roasted the motherfucker, and you see them laughing too, right? <laughs> and I'm laughing too because people, I, I'm not a dude like and those who naturally roast like that. I'm not a dude who writes shit down or nothing. It's just right then. So that's why I'm genuinely laughing. Yeah. I'm laughing too because I'm like, yo, that's just funny as shit. And I've been, you know, I've had dudes who, who women would consider to be like some great looking dudes, fine or whatever. Oh, thank start you. Questioning, oh. Start questioning, they, they questioning themselves. You know what I mean? I, I remember one dude, man, I was roasting him by his nose. That's my man. I'm roasting this shit out of him. I had everybody rolling. About, might have been 100 people there. And then later on, he was, he was by himself and shit looking in the mirror. He said, yo, did my nose really fucked up like that? And this, and this is after everybody left. On the you side. Know what I mean? he so, so he's like, man, wait a minute. All these women tell me this, but sugar got me so bad. Like, I'm like, my nose really I'm ain't nothing. You a mutual, you know I mean? a mutual friend of ours tells a story. I won't name the rapper, but a mutual friend of ours tells a story about how you told the rapper he had a jaw like a cash register. Damn. <laughs> oh, oh no! You, you know who I told that? Right? Yeah, yeah, I know. I don't. We don't need to say it on here because that's it for you. Yeah, but I, <laughs> that, that that shit was initially like. <laughs> That was initially. Uh, we can say set. it. We can say it. Money, it rest in peace, Biz Marquis. Uh, <laughs> yeah, Biz, man. I, yo, we had we had the crazy roast session, man. And then you know, come on, Biz, my man. Rest in peace, man. All love, right? Yeah. I had some great hip hop moments with Biz, but <laughs> every time I saw, every time I saw him, I fuck with him. I'd be like, yo, after he did that, you got what I need, and the shit went platinum, blew up. Yeah, I was like, listen. Whitney, Whitney Houston trying to get up with you. You know, I, I seen her like when we was in Cali, she was like, I need to get up with Biz. Mm. And he would get that serious boy, he'd be like, get out of here, man. Like, you know, I'm fucking with him, right? But I'm saying every time he would take that half second, cause you know, we, we're moving we're moving in the light. You know, so I, you know, I might see Whitney like like this week or, or I might have seen Eddie Murphy like next week, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So when I said that to him, he would always laugh. And then when I told you when I freestyled like about I feel like 10 minutes straight with him beatboxing. You know, that that was a, a highlight. But the roast session now, was too, because everybody know how Do you wish like it was, like it is now? Sometimes it sucks like thinking about, damn, I wish we had phones back then because you'd have all that. Just that, just that, the beat, just that freestyle session would be would be like Listen, gold. I got, have, um, you know what I'm saying? I got, um, we got mad footage of shit that you can't even imagine. Did you roll with a guy with a VHS recorder? I mean, I don't know who had, uh, well, we had. Because back yeah, then, that's what it would have been. Someone with something on their yeah, shoulder had, like we that. Had, you know I mean? We had, um, shout out to Keebler. Shout out to Biggest Gord. They was filming our shit for years. Like, oh, nice. So that's why, that's why when you see our documentary, it's shit's going to be crazy. Because it's, it's like, there's footage of shit like that. Me roasting. Oh, man. yeah, you. you I mean, we have footage because that's what we was doing. You know, we'd be on tour so much then. Like, you might, we got a 20-hour bus ride. All right, we got to fly here, and then we're going to be here on the road for 14 hours. You know what I mean? Yo, we're going to stop and eat McDonald's, but nobody can't shit on the bus. You know what I mean? So you got to you gotta wait till we pull over. Yo, that's a good thing. You got to hold <laughs> that sphincter tight. So one time we pulled over in the Swiss Alps. We were in Switzerland, in the Alps, going around skinny-ass roads and shit up the mountains, getting higher. And then everybody had to eat. So at one point, we pulled over. I feel like it was McDonald's or something back then, but... We ate, everybody ate, shit. Everybody got laid laid down and stuff or whatever. And uh, and, and next thing you know, everybody, we got to pull over at the uh, bathroom. We got to pull over, pull over. Cold as shit, right? We run, everybody runs in the back. That shit was crazy. And, uh, MOP, all of us are there, whoop, 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 all the doors. Then like you look in the bathroom and everybody start yelling, yo, the water's ice. You know what I mean? So the, the toilet, the toilet water was ice. Oh shit! Like, it's frozen. Still, everybody, everybody had to go. So it is what it was. It was cold as shit in there, literally. Oh shit! They go times three. What's Good happening? Good gang so, terminology. So I, I just seen a little, I just seen a little square. And I see my man little <laughs> turn. I'm like yo, I'm like yo, what's good shit? <laughs> yo, I'm glad you even here because we had you on, and we was doing mine. 
Like, like we we couldn't even see us or nothing. That shit was like, oh, that was crazy, man. It was so upset. What's good? Was so upset. His, your mic might be muted, term because we can't hear you. Yeah, you muted. We can't hear you. Make sure you hit yes. that like button, and subscribe. Yeah. There we go. There we go. Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. What it is. What's popping, y'all? No oh, man. man. Fooling, man. You Enjoy know what this saying? great what weather. Time, man. What up? Yeah, man. You know, you know. Listen, normally, man. We would be getting ready tomorrow to see a game if dudes had to brought their shit. So yeah. now, Don't talk that's about a little that. to the side. But other than that, man, you know, shout out to you, man. Shout out. I seen a little, the, the little um, good dad gang and the Ewings popping out. You know what I mean? So, you know, it's crazy term, you know, after I asked you to speak on it. But um, so we got the original Ewings. Like, so, so yo, part of the story is I go to, um, uh, Atlanta and go, Guru's going to Morehouse. So he got Stan Smith's. You know what I mean? And that's what the, you know, the Will Smith dudes was wearing, like in college. And I, I got the Ewings. That's the sneaker, the original. That's the sneaker of the day. You know what I mean? So then I go buy Guru his pair and I get, you know, I get me a new pair and we got the Ewings. And then all these years later, when you pop up with them again, that just was nostalgic for me because I was like, yo, I remember the Ewings is like what we was doing. The U is yeah. what we was doing, you know what I mean? So hell yeah, now it's original. What's I did an interview. I did an interview yesterday, and the, the kid who interviewed me said first time he ever seen a pair of Ewings was in the Gangstar video. Yeah, you're probably right. You know what I'm saying? Because dude, but that was dude. pretty cool, man. Because like, damn, you know, full circle. But y'all being like my big bros and shit like that, and uh, it's just it's just dope, man. How we able to still move forward with the culture and all that, and you know, now we that we've been able to take a legendary. You know, basketball player originally repping Cambridge and became a New York Knicks legend. And you right. know, take his his platform and then promote. You know what I got going on through the sneaker. Right. You know so it's lit. Of course, it's it's a win win. I mean, shoot, when I was wearing your, uh, when I was wearing Ewing, Ewing's, we used to weave the um, we was weaving the shoelaces. Yeah, you know I mean, so you wasn't yeah. tired. It was like some two different, two different colors and all yeah, that. Yeah, they be woven like like four like four of them shits. But I don't even know how they did. People used to do it for me. But I mean, <laughs> that shit is iconic, and it's an iconic move because, um, like we know about you with the Good Dad movement and such, you know. But um, um, was that was that like an international type move, or is that just local, more local, That's, like sneakers? It's international now. It, you know, it started as a hashtag on the gram, and then it turned into you know hats and shirts, and just you know fathers hanging out with their kids doing stuff like, you know, sporting, going to the sports games and hanging out on the weekends, going to the park, just regular dad stuff. And then, you know, it turned into collaborations with people like Ewing, you know, the stuff we did with y'all, with the Good Dad Gangstar, shout out to Cream, yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, Nikki Diamonds and, you know, different different people and different celebrities wearing it and uh, like Jamie Foxx and yeah. other people like yeah. that, man. So it became, it became yeah. global. Like now it's global, you know what I mean? That's dope too, because, you know, you you know, it, I, I look at the longevity too of like certain. I was watching with some video you came to years ago uh, when I was shooting the Do Your video. You know yeah, the saying? Do Your video, yep. And you had put me on like years ago and said, yo, we hitting that shit in the corner. I'm like, yo, dude, right. I, I done peeped that because I at that time I didn't really know you. So right. I looked at the shit and I was like, oh shit, it's turning and them shit with that long hair and all that. Right? Yeah, <laughs> me and that eye. I see, I see, because you pointed it out to me. He was like, yo, right in so-and-so. And I look, so I'm watching that shit yesterday. I'm like, yo, man, we we went back like a long way. That's, you know what I'm yeah. saying? That's, That's going on 20 years, because that, that was 2005. Yeah, and what you do now, and what you have done, because, you know, word on the street is like, yo, you know Term? He got 8 million albums. You know what I mean? I said, not 8 million. No, he do, for real. You heard him, they start naming them shit. Right. <laughs> oh, they right here. Hey, yo, we already know, man. We already right know. In. You know, I mean, you covering the- <laughs> Y'all good, y'all good. I, I know you breathe, I know you breathe this shit, so it's like, are you working on something now, or you just- Yeah. Put some other things, or what's happening? I just dropped a CD today, man. It's called The Summer Pack. Shout out to my girl, MK. Okay. She's she, she right over there hanging out, too. What up, what up? They're in, the, they're, in the stu- they're in the stew with me, man. You got to keep some feminine energy in the studio. Can't be a bunch of dudes, man. We need to get the girls' opinion, too. You know what I'm saying? Like, yo, how that sound? Right. Because like girls is players, too. You know what's up, baby girl? You know? Okay. 
Hey, All listen. right, that's right. I know that's hey, right. You're right about that. You're right about that, record players. But anyway, uh, stop. Yo, shout out to DL, Check man. your DL feet because I think the coins here. are coming. Huh? I said yeah. shout out to DL because DL did a joint on here uh, called Fresh for the Summer. Mm-hmm. So, you know, whoever uh, oh, yeah. whoever wants to buy this, you can get this right now on my band camp, Terminology Band Camp. And uh, the link is all over my Instagram, Twitter, all that stuff, man. So I just dropped this today, and it drops on all platforms Friday. This is actually number 48, Shug, since we're talking numbers. Okay. This is my 48th project. You know, this being the 50th year of hip-hop, I'm going to make it where I get to number 50 before the year's over, man. Yeah. So, you that know. That's going to be a beautiful hey, thing. You know, you just keep on keep on going, because you are 48, you almost got your height. No you know? <laughs> oh, he got jokes Yo. today, people. Yo. La zona del on tour, right? Yo, on tour, he used man. to call me LT, Little hey, Term. Yo. Hey, yo, one story I love with us, though, is, uh, is Term, you know, that's my man. So I know he thorough and shit. We all, you know, we on tour. We kicking it. And some yep. big, big Herman the Monster robot dudes, like, <laughs> you are little. You are little. Right? <laughs> and we like, yo, Term guy, like, yo, listen. I'm gonna relax. Call, I'm gonna little call me a little one more time. Yo, Shig said, yo, Shig said, know. hey, term, don't. He said, yo, you better not let them call you small any anymore because the dude kept coming. These dudes, we in a, another country. All these he dudes, was huge. Like, dude, like, he was know, bigger than me. Hey, yo, yeah. hey, here's another one. So there was another light, a light skinned one of them German guys, whatever he was like, dude. And like, and he, and you know, he kind of similar with the nose, like, term. And my fucking kept saying in his language, yo, they say I look like you. They say I look like that chair was like, yo, on some cool shit. Yo, that motherfucker don't look nothing like me. Just the nose a little bit. <laughs> and uh, I'm rolling because I'm like, he the same how you say. I know you remember, we was like in the spot. And this dude like, yo, I look, I'm your twin. He was like, yo, man, this motherfucker. <laughs> yo, he yo, ain't much. That's amazing. <laughs> you know us. Uh, oh, man. Yo, yo, I'm telling you, in the way we did it, the way we was like, it was like, yeah, you was rocking. But then, Dan, you was just having fun too and just living. I spoke to Dan's brother. Um, Dan's brother has a podcast. Uh, shout out to Tandy, man. That's what it's called. I don't know about that name, but anyway, um, oh, that's boy. Dan's brother Simon, and he um, and he uh, was had a story too. He had a story for. He ain't never been on a tour with us, right? This is Dan's brother, Dan Green's brother, yes, and sir. he had a story. From when you know you with the mattress and Dan and shit, and me coming. Yeah, oh, yeah, that's right. I'm like, I'm, we I'm like Dan Green on tour. Yo, dudes went home. We used to terrorize cats, man. Hey, hey, and he, and, and he, hey, hey, and Babcock is one and no against them. Yep. So, you know, Kevin Babcock, shout out to yo, Cyrus. Yo, shout out to Cyrus, man. <clears throat> but yeah, those, man. I mean, here. Was What's that? You in your studio right now? I'm in Bob Nash's studio, Wonka Sound. So that you know, I've been working out of here for 20 years. I'm actually yeah. um, mixing right now. Um, Bob is actually in the other room mixing down me and Paul Wall's album that we about to drop this summer. Right. So you know, me and Paul Wall, our second album is done. We mixing it down, mastering it right now. Right. And um, yeah, man. So I'm gonna get back to it, man. But I love you guys, man. Thanks for letting me on your platform. Yeah. Thank oh, you for yeah. stopping oh, by. Out right now. What's what's it called again? Say one more time called the summer pack man the summer pack is out now shout out to mr dl he's on there paul wall rex too many to name you know what i mean but uh the cd's out now and it's out on all platforms this friday term give your yeah, socials right. y'all heard it here man <laughs> yeah at terminology st all right hit me up peace no doubt. thank you thank you peace, thank peace. you oh, love. appreciate you man peace man salute yeah all right, Shug. So the last thing I was saying about that DMC thing was, um, oh, was he there? Yeah. So DM, we all we all established a few weeks back that that whole AI thing in rap was kind of corny. Um, mm-hmm. But DMC was one of those guys who could have benefited from the technology. And another person who's going to benefit from the technology is DOC. But I think these two guys should just take take the loss for the culture of not hip hop just music in general because mm. we can't have famous people embracing this shit I, that's what i said i can make a big sugar verse right now you want a big sugar verse i got one for cheap boop, 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 boop. Well, Ty- type up the lyrics here we go <laughs> here's, the thing about, here's the thing i'm talking about so don't do it people when they agree and sign on that's what makes it fucked up somebody's gonna yeah when some because because excuse me if it's a few people and somebody's offering them a bag 
I could see that shit happening. You see what I'm saying? That, you know, so that's the part you worry about. You know what I mean? And it'll fuck the game up, but we'll see what happens, man. Because you, you can't actually get create creativity in the in the, in the uh, just being raw, the raw element, all that shit. So you know, but hey, so we're not a, we're not AI. We Big Shug, DL, and Tanya the Cold. We gonna rock original shit to the day we old. And I'm already old because both of y'all younger than me. But now we gonna go to the next episode and see what's mm. up. Next subject, Cormega. <laughs> Cormega is upset that Gangstar is being overlooked. He says that is blas blasphemy. Cormega has one question as he reflects on hip hop's legacy and the culture's 50th, 50th year. Why doesn't Gangstar get more love? Mm. So, to me personally, it's always it's also like when we was when we was jumping off, when we were like you know daily operation and on hard to earn everything at that point, man, we were performing places where the show was sold out. You know what I mean? Like like big places, just like dudes who were, who were platinum, and that's what used to frustrate um. Guru a lot because he'd be like, man, we getting the same treatment. You know what I mean? People camping out in hotels or in the lobby, all that shit, man. You know, and, and but the sales weren't the same. So as years went by, you do become uh, greater and maybe more famous because you know because he died like that. So more people gonna listen. Um, but I think that type of stuff is coming around though. The people, people, I, I think they're coming around to what that that is. I mean, the album. The album, the posthumous album, um, one of the best yet. Uh, that was, um, you know, woke people back up to that. You know, um, the, the posthumous album. But then COVID came right then. Yeah. So we you know, we we had planned to do a tour and several dates, and a bunch of stuff we would have been doing, and you know what I mean that happened. So, uh, but there's more things to come still. I think, I think the movie's gonna, you know, help out a lot too. The documentary will help out that legacy be, be no more you know what i mean but i think it was there's such i think there's some little truth in what i th i feel like people people recognize gangstar i personally think dj premier is bigger than gangstar like uh, because mm. because he has you know gangstar's just gangstar when dj premier can go i'm gonna make album mc8 i'm gonna make an album with fucking you, you know right. uh, ll cool j so, like so i feel like he he yeah. was able to branch off p perhaps but that could also boil down to internal shit that they couldn't continue to to grow. Um, you know what I'm saying? I don't know. I wasn't there. So. Well, as as we know, like, um, so Premier did become bigger because even when the out like the gangsta that last album they did together took five years to come out. So in the five years to come out, um, uh. Premier was doing like his doing work. He was still working. Yeah, yeah. And grew what he was doing. So therefore, shit grew like that. Now you put your album up, and then the label I think dropped it or whatever, and bullshit happened. And now you know, okay, so people ain't really looking for it like that. Like my seven albums came out after the group broke up. That's like crazy. Like, all, you know what I mean? all of them. Yes. Oh, yes. Wow. And so that's what I'm saying. Like that. You know. That's why there's a contingency. Of fans and shit like that that know me, like probably you know, like relevant like that, you know, worldwide because because coming out with albums afterwards, you know, and then Premier came out, you know, and put together that gangster album, yep. but um, and and he's probably right there. I overlook, you know, there's a crew, the whole shit, but but in a way they're not all the way either because Premier Premier the, at one point there was two producers. That was the theme and the soundtrack to the hip hop movement, and the two front runners were always Dr. Dre and DJ Premier. That's how that shit was, because at that time too, the biggest records was like you know, Biggie coming up with kicking the door, and then Dre doing something over there like California Love or whatever he was doing. You know what I mean? Where these dudes were making these iconic records. You know, if you anywhere right now, I think now, the difference. You, I think the difference is that Dr. Dre was producing. Hit records, not not that not that kicking the door wasn't a hit record. It wasn't the single. It wasn't big. You know, it wasn't the single. Oh. Dr. Dre was producing the singles. So. so, so this is the difference. So what you're basically saying is, uh, 
is hit records. I mean, hit, excuse me, radio hit records. Because um, yeah. the reason why I say that is because people would consider uh, kicking the door to be a hit record. Like it's underground. It's underground. People, it, it, it's on. People, it's on a hit album. So it, it you know, but people, like when they were play, they were playing that all the time. Yeah, just like the other one, Ten Crack Commandments. Same thing. You know what I mean? When that would come on, like my fuckers was like, you know, just like Nas with New York State of Mind. You know what I mean? People, they those might have been. I think Nas might have been a single, whatever. You know what I mean? But those were they, these were soundtracks for the East Coast. You know what I mean? All that premier music, and then Dre over on that side with the West Coast. Cause Dre even said to himself, nobody could fuck with him. Only dude he thought that you could probably fuck with him is DJ Premier. Like he said that himself. Yeah, I think Dre. He, I, I think Dre's in a league of his own personally, but I do mm -hmm. think that D, DJ Premier is is one of the greatest producers of all time. I'm not taking that away from him, but you can't. You can't. It, it's tough to say. All right, look at the artists that that. Dr. Dre put out, not the artists that he worked with, the people, the careers that he made are, well, here's the thing. are in here's the incredible thing. lineup of, a, of careers. That, that's, a, that's, a, that's a great, excuse me, great in that regards, because uh, Premier, Premier basically didn't put out artists. Like the way we came out with him was we were just, we were part of like the crew. So yeah, it yeah. wasn't like he, and, and trust me, if things went another way, you know, like same with Jay Rue. Jay Rue should have been a platinum artist. His songs was playing just like their songs, like heavy. You know, come clean and then playing yourself with Biggie Thought was about him and then that crew. So them records was like, you know, on some East Coast shit, like at that time or whatever. So, I mean, there was a whole bunch of shit that could have been a different way, but them dudes, the movement was with that too. <laughs> no like, just no just to Jay Rue, the damager, but like he's, he's not Snoop Dogg. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah, he's not. You know what I'm not saying? Snoop, he's not he's fucking. Not, yeah. He's not. He's not Snoop Dogg, but he's not Snoop Dogg. But at his time, that's the shit that was rocking too in the East Coast. Dreadlocks, spitting facts. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> God body. Yeah. You know what I mean? That was like a big thing. Like at that point, that's what made him. You know what I'm saying? You can't go to that era and, and even West Coast motherfuckers knew about Jay Root. You know what I mean? Because they, I mean his shit. It was premiered too with the music yeah but but this dude if you ever go listen to jay Rue's records there's nothing like like silly fun about it is this shit is mad factual it's a little bit of a little bit of hilarity here and there but but what he's spitting is some real shit like so you're like wow i'm listening to some shit that's kind of you know get me up to speed but i'm bopping because premier made some crazy music to go with it but then the videos and shit even made that sh see his shit was a movement i feel like jay rue like snoop that was some west coast shit, whatever whatever but if you look at rappers okay as a rapper like we we know that jay rue was better than him as a rapper you know what i mean i don't but, know about that snoop dogs one of the i don't know man i can't okay. i can't okay, i can't so, spit so, off the top so, of my head i couldn't spit you so, one rhyme so from me, jay rue the damage let me ask you something let me ask you something when i say someone's a great rapper you know what i mean um, are you saying lyricist? Because I'll give you that. I mean, that's what I'm saying. I can't say, I can't, when I, if you say rap as far as on sales and, 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 and being popular, more popular and all that shit like that. Yeah, yeah of course. It's cat. But I'm talking about as a lyricist, you're never going to put Snoop ahead of J. Root. You know what I mean? Like anybody who knows, knows that. That's what I mean. Mm. As far as, as far as. Uh, popularity and being, you know, a I'm just talking about making a rap song. I'm gonna take a Snoop Dogg record ten times out of ten over a J. Ru the Damager record. But I'm saying, what's your criteria though? That's what I'm saying. Good, I don't know. I'm, I'm just being honest with you, and I'm saying it's not a but diss you, to him. Honest with what? You can't be saying lyrical. No, no. Like I'll, I'll give you that the lyrical thing. I'll give you that. But I'm saying that's all, like, that's all I'm saying. Okay. No, that's, that's good. My, I, I admit it. That's that. part. That's part of my criteria. Me for someone rapping good. Yeah, like you know what I mean. Like, oh shit, this motherfucker like kind of, you know, kind of. Even if he's a clown, I mean, what I mean is, even if they shit is some funny shit, no. you know what I mean. I think that's dope too. You know what I mean. I'm like, oh, this motherfucker's funny as shit. You so you I mean? think Jay Rue the Damager has better songs than anything on Doggy Style? I didn't. Say, I didn't say better. So well, well. This I'm just curious. I'm asking this honest question because well, I don't know. I'm, I'm you know curious. But there's songs that come to mind, and I think you got to hear them shits. Yeah, because, yeah, because uh, Ain't the Devil Happy? Just listen to that. Go listen to the music. 
Just listen to the music yeah. and um and I'm, the prophet. I'm open to listen. The prophet too. Listen to the prophet. I'm just saying that just the, even the music. The music will get you rhyming your own shit. You'll take Jay Ru out of the equation. Yeah. The shit is like it was a movement, man, with Preem with these rap. You know, that's what Preem Preem shit was on, like fucking the atomic blaze right there. Yeah. You know what I mean? So and, and Jay Ru would hit it right because you he's making these joints and you're you're there to get uh uh, uh the success on these records. Then comes J Ru, I mean, then comes Dap and Melika, who can't even really rap. You know what I mean? But he's hitting them with all this fire. Yeah. He's my dudes. He hitting them with this fire, and it's like, you know, you, you and um Tanya could have been a rap group at at that point. That's a, that's the kind of heat he was putting out. Now I don't know if you ever listened to all those songs and projects, but I think if you did, as a producer, you would see like even more what I'm talking about as far as these songs. Did you ever see the Prophet um, video? I probably, but I I'll, I'll watch it again. I will. Yeah, yeah. So, so the prophet, you might have because it was popular. Yeah, I've seen, but it was I've seen that. Yeah, it was cartoon. Okay, but it's it's dope how like J. Rue did all these voices, and then it shit. It was a cartoon. And it, it was that's what made it like a popular ass video. Mm. And then the um, then the one they did the karate one. It's just it's not. It's because that music was such a fucking theme. And yeah, there's some banging ass shit you gotta like, like listen to on that. You know what I mean? But you know, that shit was just... Anyway. Just speaking of Dr. Dre and Snoop Dogg, this is random. I, I didn't do this on purpose, but on the Segway King, they've announced they're going to do a new album together. Yes. And it's going to come out in 2035. No, oh, damn. <laughs> no, right. Um, it's like, Mr. D.L. and Tanya have an announcement to make. They're getting married. <laughs> so I don't know that, 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 that. All right. Uh, all right, a couple, couple more things I had for hip-hop. Old Dirty Bastard's son, Young Dirty Bastard, salutes RZA for looking out for him after the death of the Old Dirty Bastard. That's dope. So I don't know the the you know the financials or anything, but it seems like he took care of him when his dad passed away. Well, I'm going to tell you like this. So, Wu-Tang. I would say Wu-Tang for the children, whatever, whatever. Them dudes did not have to... Be having him on tour and all that that tour they just did yeah he was on every day doing his father's songs no shit. Oh, and all that dope. whatever huh i said that's dope she said that's dope i, I mean I'm, I'm not saying i'm not saying what's bad but i'm saying that's looking out more than anything yeah no no you i'm just I mean? saying that's dope i didn't i didn't realize that that was happening he wasn't doing now to me i look at it like i think it's dope on the lookout part you know but uh i think it's dope on the lookout part but as far as like, like I don't really like want to see your son or whoever doing your joints. You know what I mean? Yeah. Unless, unless maybe he was sounding similar or whatever, and he, and, you know, he's doing that. That's cool because if your father was a singer and you sang his joints, like that would be going <laughs> to do. Yeah, you know yeah. what I mean? But some of that is like because it looks like you're acting. You you can't act to be him. You know what I mean? You gotta be. You they gotta should be you. They should have got the guy who plays him on the Hulu show because. Oh my God, that guy's amazing. Have you seen it yet? Nah. Just nah. just go on YouTube and type in "old dirty bastard" from the Hulu show just to watch a clip, and you're gonna be like, "Wow, is that old dirty bastard?" And you'd be like, "Hold on a second, hold on, let me watch that again." Okay. Wow, I think I think that's old dirty bastard. When did they film yeah. this? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That's like that's like Ice Cube something with Ice Cube. Yeah, that was nuts too. Like, yo, that dude was Ice Cube in that movie. I don't think I've ever yeah. seen a son look like more like his dad. Looking like a snack. Than that guy looks like his dad. He look like looking one. like a snack. Oh, boy. All right. we, ain't we ain't talking about can't snack. You can't snack on Ice Cubes. You don't get, there's no yes, you can. Cube. Yes, hey, you hey, can. You, you, can't you snack suck on, on them until you melt them hey, or you crunch on them hey, and bite them apart. Can't, can't Destroy them. The ice Cubes. <laughs> ice Cube and Ice Cube Jr. Oh my goodness. Looking and like a snack. The last thing I wanted to bring up was there was been a third person charged in the death of Jam Master J. Oh really? So um Oh yes, I peeped that. Uh forty nine year old Jay Bryant from Queens has been charged with the murder of Jam Master J. Wow. It's Did just, you know him? Like, what was the association? I I've met Jam Master J, but I don't know him. Though. No, no, not Jam Master J. This third guy. Oh, jeez. Um, forty nine years old. He could, uh, hmm, probably could know him. Um, 
you said here, ba ba bum. Jet Master J Merle trial has taken another dramatic twist as a third man has been charged over the death of the Run DMC legend. According to New York Times, federal prosecutors in Brooklyn indicted Jay Bryant of Queens on Tuesday, charging him with murder while engaged in narcotics trafficking and other drug trafficking offenses. So yeah. everyone's innocent until proven guilty, but mm -hmm. well, they kill fucking whoever did that is fucking lame, dude. It's Jet Master J. If I there's mean, one guy in the in the in the entire, if they're like, dude, hey, who's the one guy that would ever kill in the music industry, in the hip hop industry, and be like, I don't know, someone in Run DMC. Yeah, <laughs> you know obviously what I'm we're not thinking when they committed Listen, the crime. On, on, yo, on the real, on the real, um, it's like when the dude shot Versace. You know what I'm saying? It's like, yo, Same. who wants to shoot Versace? Yeah. This dude, you know what I'm saying? He, Fashion icon chilling, you know what I mean? <laughs> and, and you know, his sexual preference what is what it, it, that, it is. That that could be a reason at the time. That could be a reason. Yeah, but I mean yeah. I mean he 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 they would tell him to get security and he'd be walking his neighborhood like cause he was like, nah, I'm good. And this dude knew that. And then you go run up and shoot him like that. And he was he was a beloved dude. So it's like, you know what I mean? You know, people, man, they you know, first of all, bullets don't have bullets don't discriminate. You know what I'm saying? They don't discriminate to the point that once you squeeze and release them bullets yep. and you do their damage, there's no taking back that damage. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's, it's a lot of people are sitting in cells and I've met quite a few people and all that, that just by one instance of pulling a trigger, you know what I mean? That they, they, they put them somewhere for the rest of their life or close to it, you know what I mean? So I'm telling you, uh, rest in peace, Jam Master Jay. I met his son, man, you know, real good dude. And, um, you know, legacy continues on that, you know? So back to your homie, DJ Envy is my last story. Gunplay could uh -oh. face up to five years in prison for a leaked conversation he had with, uh, no, with DJ Envy. What was the conversation about? The conversation stemmed from DJ Envy making fun of Gunplay's daughter. And uh, Gunplay oh. jumped, jumped, in the, jumped on the phone with him and, and was like, um, you know, what was he, uh, you know, talking shit. Threatening him, basically, I would imagine. Right. And right. DJ Envy response was, "Yeah, we, we can fight. When, when do you want to meet up? All that shit." So it's like, I don't know. But my quick thing is, how did this phone conversation get out, DJ Envy? <laughs> I mean, it's like when that, it's like when that, uh, that, um, that chick film that the, the owner of uh, was the Clippers, Donald Sterling. And she filmed him. I mean, she recorded him and then turned that in. Probably try to get some money from him. But then, you know, somebody else, she had, she didn't do it for free. So somebody must have, like, gave her something. Could have been the wife. The wife was rich as hell, too. Right? But then he had to sell the team. You know what I mean? So, so it's, it's crazy. You, you got you to gotta watch what you say at all times anyway. Yeah. It says here you know that I mean? Gunplay decided to leak the information. So sorry, DJ Envy. I'll take that last comment back. Wow. Yeah. And just for that. Write and it just down. for that. You gotta wear that little police uniform that he wore. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, all, you gotta be all Harry Belly Fonte too. Harry Belly Fonte. That's that's it, dog. You just you know he he put out a pillow in his shirt, so I don't know what the hell he was doing. You know what I mean? Um, it's hilarious. Hey, shout out to my man too, uh, J. Rue, man, on that album. The sun, speaking of him, the sun rises in the east. That was twenty nine years. 29. Yeah, 29 years on that, man, you know what I'm saying? So, and I remember the beginning, you know what I'm saying, where it was like, yo, you know, 29 years ago, I remember I, I had to make a run to um, Providence to go catch him at this spot called the living room. Then we were at a uh, radio station afterwards, because when cats came through town, uh, like I was on tour a lot with Gangstar, the J. Rue, when he did his first album, he came to Boston. You know, of course, I'm going to go to spots with him, you know, and then we all went on tour after that. He was doing a couple of his songs on the Jasmine Taz tour. So that was his first tour, too, man. You oh, know, so shit. shout out to him. Man. It's Still crazy how, how old Jasmine Taz is. I thought it was five, like, uh, uh, I thought it was a few, maybe even more than a few years younger than I've come to learn that it was when it first came out. Yo, did, did we did we talk about the Canadian Commando? I think so, right? Last uh, week? Not last week? No, not last week. Didn't, no, about about the part of um, he can't get a new trial. 
they want to give him a hefty, pro the prosecution wants to give him a hefty uh, time in jail. And he's pleading that, please don't ruin my life. Oh, yeah, we saw that. Yeah, yeah, yeah you, you know. We spoke about that. I don't know if it was last week. Yeah. I think we did. Commandizo. You know, you prob know the problem with that is you took your nonsense, wh whether you shot her or you did it, you took your fucking loud nonsense up to Beverly Hills in front of uh, people's houses like Kim Kardashian and you, and you think you're going to skate on that. Nah, man. Unfortunately, mm -hmm. you're not going to skate on it. That's why those neighborhoods are like that. Because they don't, they don't deal they don't with the riffraff. Riff -raff. Exactly. I knew you were going to say that. So nah, man. They want I the mean, big asses, but not the riffraff. <laughs> <laughs> Um, also, man, Hit Boy announces a new album with Reckless the Ratchet and Ratchet collab with the fa uh, father, Big Hit. Um, Hit Boy announced plans for his next album, Surf or Drown 2, by sharing a new single in a video called Reckless and Ratchet, featuring his, fa his father, Big Hit. Check it out. You know what I'm saying? So we don't have to go into that, you know. Um, Hello, Cool J. Why don't you hit a guy up like him? Yeah, why don't you hit up the hit. guy who makes the beats for Migos? Why you know you what I'm saying? It, it's just like, it's crazy. Why don't, you, why don't you go get a hit, boy? You know, <laughs> I'm nah, I mean, you know just that's all you got to do, man. You know? Danger zone. So, hold up. Tanya, what's this? A, a sniffer. No, I see. <laughs> <laughs> a snifter. No, no, as, as, as you put your nose on the microphone, you go, it's a sniffer. A no, it's, it's a, a snifter. It's, she's been putting her nose there on stuff. Go. She just got back from Columbia, so. Yo, she just said it's a sniffer. And that, that, if, if, see, see, you got to clip that part. So <laughs> that's what it looks like you're doing. You're explaining what this is. It's a sniffer. You know what I'm saying? I remember I was it's going to the studio. It's a sniffer. It's a snifter. Hey, you're right. You know, hey, I used to go in the studios, man, and uh, sniff the mics. And, and, and <laughs> nah, but microphones would stink on some bad breath, crazy Ooh. shit. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, so, yeah so I, really? I, covered in spit. So that, that's gross. That's, that's why they started uh, busting rhymes, and then someone else in the studio was soaking them shits in Listerine. You know what I mean? Like, like I swear to God, I mean, I remember that shit because I was like, bro, you know, because ain't nothing like a fresh mic pause. I'm just saying, right? <laughs> you, you got you, that right. You need a fresh. You, I'm telling you, like even when you know when you rock, right? So you get some cordless mics, or you get the ones with the cords. Yeah. And of course, in a lot of the rock places, the cord mics would be better. You know what I mean? Because they wouldn't be whistling Dixie at times. But if the system was correct, like Japan, Japan always had the, the proper technology system. on point. Oh, this shit was like crazy. Still, you know, and um. They just gonna sound terrific, but sometimes you know it goes awry. But now everybody, everybody's pretty good with that, man. You know. But so shout out to them, man. Um, you know, whatever, man. He forgot what he was <laughs> saying. He just had I a think, senior moment. He was like, "Oh no, Ooh. I said, no, I said um, it already, remember? I think we should remember? get into. I said it already. We should get no, into yo, them, listen. them sports. Hold up, oh. hold up. I said it already. I remember I because I was saying they coming out. With that new album, that's all. I, I didn't want to elaborate, you know, because I saw a video earlier today that was when surfing goes wrong. Uh oh, what yeah. was it? <laughs> it was Can I Bust in Mr. DL. No. Oh. <laughs> Where'd you see that? Oh, I posted it on Facebook or something, Instagram. It was like, hey, hey, this dude is like tearing it up. I said, like, hey, thanks, bro. Hey, bro. I will, I, I, I will can... give cannabis his credit. He knew a lot about like technical terms about the camera and, and I was like oh shit he did and guess what I would love to do that. I, I'd love to do that voice so I'll kill it you know what I'm saying yo, <laughs> yo I get that footage and do that voice over and, and we'll be like yo wait a minute yo, <laughs> yo come here help, come here dap me up boy you know what I'm saying get out man uh, yo, he, he, his boy his voice was sounding mad extra low it sounded like he was on a microphone it's so weird yeah for real like, for real <laughs> Sound like he was eating mics, but um, <laughs> yo, so yo, uh, yo, 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 yo. We, we, yo, we have yo, a lot of sports that going on, but I my 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 stupid as hell is sport related. So okay, you know what I mean, but it is so, all right. Well then, yeah. uh, I don't really have anything else. You got anything? No. Nope.
<laughs> no, hey, no I always have hey. a bunch of stuff, then I smoke, and then they go poof oh, out of my hands. You always be like cool, cool, like you know what? Cool, cool for popos. You ain't got nothing, you know. You got no bad rabbits or bunnies. I just or have frogs. random stuff like um... <laughs> bad rabbits. <laughs> bad rabbits. No I say bad in Spanish. Malo. <laughs> Malo oh, rabbits. Malo. Oh jeez. All right. Did you well, say Malo? I guess. Uh, damn. Let me think. Uh, just making mm. sure, making sure that we don't have anything. We, we, we got it. We got everything. Nah, we good. You know. Listen, I'm gonna say this though before you start too. Um, um, as they try to figure it out, I'm just gonna let y'all know. Hit the like button. I don't know what she's talking about. I don't know what she's two people that have babies. Uh, well, Older you, gentlemen. Oh, Al Pacino. Yeah. Al Pacino yep. had a baby. Al Pacino had a baby, Big Sugar. He's like his wife is 25. <laughs> but when they have, when somebody like that has a baby though, they're doing it for the woman or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Years ago. Tony Randall was like 70 something and he had like two kids, but he said, I know I'm not gonna be here, you know, when they get old enough or whatever. You know, and then he, I think he died like soon after, like 80 or something, something like that. Nah, he's you know? still alive. Our show ended. Who? 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 Al Pacino, so he's talking about Rand Kurt Randall. Listen, oh, okay, God, my listen. bad. Yeah, listen, I'm talking about um Tony Randall. Tony Randall. Oh god. He had two kids and he was like, I wanna say he would have been 70 or 79, something like that. And he knew he wasn't going to be here, but he was doing that for his wife, who was who was a lot younger. And then he was like, yo, you because kids, he said, those kids won't know me or whatever it was. Yeah. But hey, yeah. anyway, man, uh, shout out to uh, the NBA finals coming up with Denver and um, excuse, and Miami. Yeah. You know, and uh, that's about all we got to say about that. <laughs> but then I can I can get into this next segment. Which is oh boy. Bam, 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 bam. oh boy, stupid as hell. This week, <laughs> stupid as hell is the Boston Celtics. Ah. The reason why I say the whole entire team is stupid as hell is because, first of all, you went down two games to none at your home where you live at. Um, at your home where you live at. <laughs> you lost the next game, and then. You, you you ran off three wins. The last one you was fortunate to get, you know, a quick shot from D. White. Shout out to him. That ain't easy. And then you come back home and lose. And you lose in a fashion where you never had a chance to win. Um, the first play of the game, we saw Jason Tatum, you know, sprain his ankle. That was going to affect him because because I believe if that didn't happen, he would he would have probably went for 40 points or whatever and maybe we're talking differently. But it did happen. So that means other people have to step up. And the whole team, and they played stupid the whole series. You know, um, de no defense was necessary. And then the last game where you wanted to be back at your home where you're from, you let them come in. That, let me tell you what the equivalent, the equivalent was of what happened. You knock on the door, you're home having dinner with your family. Someone knocks on the door with some people and they come in and they beat up everybody in the house. <laughs> right? I'm talking about they beat them up, everybody in the house. And then one of them with his bad ass takes all the valuables and everything else. So that's what happened to the Celtics. Miami, uh, he came into their house, beat up everybody. Parents, children, they, they beat the shit out of everybody. And Jimmy Butler took everything out of there and they left. And then that's similar to the, the end of the game. You see all the kids in the family sitting on the couch, side by side, beat up. You understand what I'm saying? So as we move forward, uh, instead of watching them in the finals, like they were there last year and didn't win, we thought maybe this might be the year. But man, the way they played and the way they went out, the entire team, is this week's stupid as hell. That's and we'll see what happens next. Boston bam, bam, bam. Hey, wait a minute. The rebirth, read that. Okay. So, boom. To re run that back a little bit. I'm a Boston fan for life. So, that shit ain't going to change. But I still know. Even if you're my friend, I could look you in the face and be like, 
You're stupid. You know what I mean? <laughs> you did something. And especially Only if you a let true people... friend can tell you you're stupid in your face. You know? That's a fact. Or you got everybody run up in your house and beat everybody up and, and you didn't do nothing, right? <laughs> you stupid. You stupid so as hell. Stuff this week, stupid as hell, man. Oh, yeah. Well, that was another good week at the Danger Zone podcast. Man, 71 mm -hmm. weeks. 71 and look again. Shout out to our uh, guest popped in real quick, Terminology. Um, a good day AKA again. Lil Term. Make sure AKA you... LT. Uh oh. AKA Herman Ology. Oh but, uh, boy. Oh boy. <laughs> La side <laughs> peligro. Um, we got jokes cool. today. Make sure you go to Big Big Shug at Gangstar on Instagram. He has merch available. Don't forget the merch. Yes. Yeah, you and find also, his nose ring there just like it. You could have one too. <laughs> wants you to hit the like button on. What do we want to hit the like button on? <laughs> Everywhere you see the Danger Zone podcast. Like and subscribe. Um, YouTube, uh, Facebook, Instagram, and iHeartRadio, Spotify, Apple Music. Man, anywhere, to... anywhere you can hear a podcast, we're there. So yep. Hit that, the Clip Channel. Clip Channel, exactly, yep. That's on YouTube, sure. too. Yeah. Sure All the episodes are there. All the clips are there. Just go to the playlist section of, for easy scrolling. Yeah, um, well, we to, we, 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 we're keeping it growing, man, like that, you know? So um, next week, we're going to have some, something good going on. Um, you know, uh, appreciate y'all. Listen, excuses make no, you know, have no purpose. Um, so don't make them. Don't, don't make them. And as we grow, you know, grow. <laughs> and also, we didn't get into this that much because you get tired of it, you become numb to it. But um, it just has to start with all these mass shootings and killings. Uh, there was a couple of instances that happened, even here in Mass at the beach, a few individuals were shot. You know what I mean? And, and a young, young kid who did one of the shootings, but. Man, we just got to, you know, find it. I just feel like I'm not trying to, you know, we got to find within ourselves you know, what we have to do for the community, what we have to do for each other, the people, man, just to, man, pull this back a little bit, slow this up, because it's so goddamn crazy, man, you know? But uh, shout yeah. out to the families, condolences to the families who lost some loved ones over this past weekend and week uh, behind the uh, senseless shootings. Uh, it's just got to, you know, it's got to stop some kind of way, man. And, you know, hopefully under, under God, we can figure this out, man, you know. But uh, we appreciate y'all. Episode 71 is in the books. And, uh, you know, we'll catch you next week, man. Peace. On my dark days. On my dark days, I chopped crack on a regular. Ran up in spots and clapped on a regular. Took big fat ass stacks from the register. No matter how hard they tried, they still couldn't measure up. Hard out hand.